If you have a fast computer like Skunkworks, it is possible to bottleneck this whole computer, the entire thing. Most people get caught up on graphics cards being bottlenecked by the CPU, but they never stop to think they can bottleneck their entire computer by hooking up to a panel that sucks. I don't think these panels actually suck. I'm just pointing to the panel. Visual aid, expensive visual aid, but one nonetheless. Water cooling parts for Skunk Works were provided by Performance PCs. For the largest online selection of PC modding and water cooling parts, head to performancepcs.com. There's a lot of information to cover here today, and I don't want to bore you with some information that I think is irrelevant to the high-level understanding of how monitors work, but I'm going to do the best I can. The problem is I've really started nerding out over panels over the last couple of years, and I get very passionate and into this, and I can talk about things that are just not important, like I'm kind of doing right now. Today I'm talking to the gamer. There are panels out there designed specifically for content creators and professionals with IPS panels and sRGB gamut and stuff like that, but that's not the point of today's video. I'm talking to the guy who's built himself his first gaming computer, and he's like, well, crap, there's other things I need, like a monitor and keyboard and all that stuff, but I don't know which monitor to get. This is way more confusing than building out the parts for my computer, because how do I know that this panel I'm getting isn't going to suck? Hopefully by the end of today's video, you'll, you'll be able to tell which ones are going to be good and which ones are not going to be good just by reading some of the basic specs. Now, there's two major specs we're going to talk about today, and one of them gets kind of confusing because it has several names that are associated for the same thing. The first one being refresh rate refresh rate. That is the number of times the panel can draw an image per second and keep it stitched together. Now, a panel can actually draw more FPS than what's actually rated, but what happens is you take that image and you divide it more than America currently is, and you get what's called screen tearing. That's where the image cannot be refreshed fast enough, and since the image is drawn in layers, it's drawn in layers like that, ladies, what happens is the image goes, blah, it gets all messed up and it doesn't stay in sync anymore, which leads which has led to the development of the technology called V-Sync, if you ever wondered. That stands for vertical sync. It means make sure all those images are aligned down the vertical so that they don't do that. So you can actually spend, send more FPS to your panel, but you get a very unpleasant gaming experience depending on how far beyond that refresh rate is. So taking something like Skunkworks here with two Titan X Pascals on water and putting it on a 60 FPS panel and turning off V-Sync would be a virtually unplayable gaming experience. Now, the reason why I say that figure can sometimes get confusing to people who are not used to looking up this kind of stuff or for the first time are starting to research panels and what all this means is you'll hear it referred to as several things. Refresh rate, you'll hear it referred to as the Hertz rate, and you will hear it referred to as the frames per second. It just basically says the number of times per second that an image can be drawn on the screen. So if it's a 60 Hertz panel, it means it can draw the image 60 times per second without tearing apart. Now, ever since the introduction of TN panels, you pretty much have seen 60 FPS panels be what is the minimum standard for gamers these days. 30 FPS doesn't cut it for most PC gamers, and you know that. So you want to strive for a panel that's at least 60 FPS. Now, the other number that plays into this is called response time. Okay, so you've got, you've got your frames per second that can be drawn, and you've got your response time. Well, what does that mean? Well, refresh rate, as I said, is the number of times the image can actually be drawn by the processing board inside the panel to display the image over and over and over and over and over again as the image is changing when you're doing games or movie, or even just moving your mouse. That mouse has to be drawn wherever it's being told to go. But response time refers to the actual pixels in the display and how long it takes that pixel to go from off to on or white and off again. It's actually referred to gray to gray or G2G. That's the number you'll tend to see in the spec chart. Now, the lower that number, the better, because what that means is that light is turning on and off super fast. A quick analogy I can give you here that you might understand is the difference of an LED flashlight versus one with a standard filament or a halogen flashlight, where you turn on the LED flashlight and it's instantaneous. It is instantaneous light. There is no heating of the filament where it takes time to turn on and kind of like pop in there, sort of like just fade in. And when you turn it off, the filament cools so it fades out. Think of like a blinker on a car when it's like blink, 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 blink. But then there's newer cars with LEDs and it's just blink, 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 blink. Yeah, someone meme that. Do me a favor, meme it. Go. So the same can be said for the pixel technology inside of your panel, where the faster it turns on and off, the less motion blur you're going to get of the panel. There is natural motion blur that happens on panels, and that's referred to as response time. Now, the slower the response time or the higher that number is, 
the more fading there is between the movement of the panel and the redrawn of images because it's taking the lights time to turn on and off and change color and for the pixel gates to do their thing. So we're gonna go back to the Hertz rating here for a second, 60 FPS versus 144. The most common argument you're gonna hear a million times regardless of where you go, the forums or Steam or the internet or YouTube is the argument of the human eye can only see blah, blah, blah FPS. Now, why do I say blah, blah, blah FPS? It's because there's no standard number that anyone's able to actually been able to confirm the human eye can see. Now that just triggered someone because I'm sure someone out there is like, no, so-and-so said that the human eye can only see ka blah, 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 and he's an optometrist or whatever. It doesn't matter because this is one of those subjective things, just like audio. Certain people hear certain tones and they may be responsive, responsive and reactive to certain tones than others, the same can be said for the human eye. It's a very integral piece of technology in your face that does amazing things that I think as humans, we still don't fully understand. Take a 60 FPS panel and take a 144 FPS panel, put them next to each other displaying the same thing and tell me you don't see a difference and I'll call you crazy. Okay, so fair warning, this next section here, if you have epilep uh, epilepsy, is that, I believe it's called epilepsy, where flashing lights can trigger a epileptic seizure, you might want to turn away because what I'm going to show right now is probably going to look like a flickering image and I really don't want to cause you any undue stress. So with that warning out of the way, here is what 60 FPS looks like on a high speed camera. We're talking 240 FPS on the camera, which is much higher than the refresh rate of the panel. But this is what 60 FPS looks like. Now, if we switch this over to 144 FPS, this is what it looks like. So there is a draw difference and a very noticeable speed difference of the panel. So now that we've got that visual aid out of the way, here is what 60 FPS looks like on a quote unquote one millisecond response time. The reason why I say quote unquote is because most people who measure gaming monitors with the actual true calibration tools and measurement tools to see the true response times have found that a lot of times one millisecond gaming panels are really more like three or four, not a true one millisecond. So that's why I say quote unquote. But anyway, here is what 60 FPS looks like on a 60 FPS panel with a one millisecond response time. As you can see, there's not a lot of fading of the pixel. But what happens when you take a 60 FPS panel and couple it with a slow response time or a light that takes a while to turn on and turn off? Well, you get what you see right here which is quite a bit of motion blur. Motion blur is very cinematic. Motion blur is all around us. Turn your head right now, I guarantee your image just blurred. Every time you watch TV, the image is blurring. You go to the movies, the image is blurring, but it's natural. Unfortunately, when you have motion blur introduced in terms of hardware level like this, it is very distracting. And in some games that require fast movement, the faster you move that mouse, the more the pixels are gonna blur, Unfortunately, it makes some games like Battlefield 1 or Twitch shooters, Counter-Strike Go, completely unplayable. So that's what 60 FPS on a, a slow response time looks like. But those two numbers are really the only thing that gamers should concern themselves with when it comes to buying a panel. Sure, there's other things like IPS versus TN, off viewing angles, there's curved monitors, 21 by nine ultra wide, like you see here with the X34 Predator behind me, 16 by nine, 24 inch, 34 inch, those things are all secondary to the two specs I just told you about, which are going to have the biggest impact on your gaming experience. So there you go, guys. That's how you can unbottleneck your computer by coupling it with a terrible monitor that would not be complementing your system. So moral of the story here, get a panel that has a refresh rate that's at least 60, but hopefully higher than the one that, uh, or the, higher than the FPS that your system is able to send to it. Now there's other things you talk about like panel overclocking and whatnot. I don't want to talk about that today. I haven't spent a lot of time doing panel overclocking. I'll be honest, I've, I know how it's done, but I don't, I don't do it. So that's not something I'm going to talk about today. Anyway, this is another one of those topics that came strictly, strictly. They came strictly from my inbox. I'm asked all the time about this topic. I finally made this video and uh, I want to do some more like this. So let me know what you guys want me to do. Hit me up, Twitter, my inbox, Facebook, all that sort of stuff. And as always guys, share this video with someone you think it'll help and make the community smarter as a whole. As always guys, stay together, be nice to each other. Don't, uh, don't be jerks to each other. So many jerks in the world, we don't need that. We don't need that anymore. Let's unjerkify the world, but I'm, people still call me a dickhole. That's okay though. It's all right. All right guys, I'll see you in the next one.